So the pond's filling quickly and I'd like to move straight to setting some coping stone, but I gotta be patient and let me tell you why. If we go around the pond and we start to, to put our coping stones into place, what we do is we pin the top of the liner, it can't move anymore. And what happens is I get this slack. See the slack right here? The way to get that slack it out is to let the pond continue to fill up all the way. Once it's full, we'll have everything pressed out and then the, the wrinkles will be limited and we'll be able to start setting the coping stone. Now there is a way to do a pond like this and not have any wrinkles whatsoever and that's to do the spray on liner. Uh, it's kind of like a spray on truck bed. Have you ever seen this truck bed spray that they do in the, the trucks? You can do that for ponds too. It's a specialty product. But the problem with that is it costs about 12 bucks a square foot and the liner that we have in this pond is about a dollar a square foot. So do the math. I have about a thousand bucks in liner in this pond. So to do this pond in a, in a spray on liner is, is quite an expense. So I'm just going to take my time. I'll let it fill up and I'll continue to work out these wrinkles and limit them as much as possible. So the pond's finally full enough that we can begin setting the coping stone. Now we're going to start on the side next to the patio and this is an area where I take great care in making low profile approach to the pond. So we want the, the rock work to be real flat so that you can walk right out and stand on the coping stone, admire the fish, maybe even sit down on the rock. We don't want anything obstructing the view of the fish and uh, our interaction points. Now uh, if you'll remember when we set the bond beam we leveled it and if you'll notice the the water's just like right there across the entire bond beam. So that's looking real good to me. The, uh, the bond beam was 16 inches if you'll remember. 16 inches wide. But I don't want that to be, um, I, I don't want you to be frozen at that 16 inches. This first rock we're going to set, it's 21 inches, 22 inches tall. It's a real, it's a real wide rock. And it's going to be a great rock that you walk out to and it's, it's going to be this big character stone right here flat. So what we're going to have to do is we'll peel back the liner a little bit. I'll carve into this outer shelf. Now the, the weight of the rock is still going to be sitting on the bond beam, giving us all that support. So we can sculpt the back edge of the, of the excavation to fit the rock, and then we can do our backfill. Now what we're, we really want to do is we want the rock work to be barely past the coping stone, almost like it's hanging over a little bit. So we've chosen some nice big fat hefty rocks so we can get that overhang and still have a nice sturdy coping stone. So we're going to start with this one right now. Okay, wait, we have this extra underlayment. Since we're on the concrete right there, hold the liner up and we're gonna throw this extra underlayment on top of the concrete bond beam as an extra padding right there. So now we've doubled up our padding underneath this big rock underneath the liner. That's good. Let's put some padding on top of this. So we put that rock down. Let's go over here. Okay, let's go ahead and get this rock in place. All the way down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Can you do it one more time? And your foot is right, this foot is right on the wrinkle. There you go. Okay. One, two, up. Okay. Oh, got yeah. it. No, 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 don't, don't jerk it. Can you pull the liner? Yeah, it's coming. Taylor, stabilize the rock. Okay, you got to do it again. Underlayment. Oh. That's good. The underlayment? No, you, you pull the underlayment. Don't is it look. Good? Yeah, it looks good. Let's see if you got it in there. Taylor, tuck the underlayment underneath. There's there's some on this side. I still got to do that side too. Yeah, this side's, yeah. I think we got it. Good. You want me to push it in? Yep, hold on. Okay, I'm coming towards the pond. Coming in, coming in. See how it just moves in easy? Mm -hmm. Stable. Boom. 
Stand on it, Rosie. Test it. <laughs> All right. So it's not going anywhere. And then when we backfill it, it'll get even stronger. All right, I want to explain what we just did. Uh, this is a do-it-yourself pond. We're not talking about using machines coming back here. This is about as big a rock that we can easily manage with two or three people. Uh, I have this bar. It's just a leverage bar. And uh, when we put the big rock in there, you see it kind of pushed the wrinkles towards the pond. So in order to get them out, I had to put just a couple bricks down. And if you'll notice, I put underlayment below it. And then I just used the leverage of this bar to easily lift up the rock. And we were able to pull the liner from the back and pull that wrinkle out that was bunched up towards the pond. Now, additionally, we put down some fabric on top of the, the liner to help cushion that a little bit as the rock sets down there on top of it. And if you'll notice, when I had this leverage, I was able to get it up in the air and just ease it out, kind of get it right into position. So a bar like this is going to be important if you're using some big character stones like this. Um, otherwise, you could do it all by hand.